Here we have an example where we're going to try to optimize profit. You have a production capacity of 10 million units. The profit equation for your product is shown below, where quantity Q is in hundreds of thousands and profit pi is in thousands. How many units should you produce to maximize profit? What is the corresponding profit? So what we're looking to do is maximize profit and we're given this equation for profit. So a classic optimization problem. So first step, we're going to determine the first derivative. So I got pi prime is going to be equal to the derivative of 5q cubed is going to be 15q squared. The derivative of 75q squared is going to leave me with 150q. And the derivative of 375q is equal to 375. And finally, the derivative of 500 is 0. So I just leave it alone. So step 1 is done. Next thing, I'm going to set this derivative to be equal to 0 and solve for the corresponding q values instead of x values. So setting this to be equal to zero, um, there's a variety of approaches I could take. Recognizing that this is a quadratic, I could use the quadratic formula or I can try factorization. I'm gonna try factoring this out and I can first factor out 15 so that I'm left with 15 times Q squared minus 10 Q plus 25. And all of this is going to be equal to zero. And now I'm going to see if I can factor this further. I need to find some factors of 25 that add up to negative 10. So I can think of 5 and 5, but those add up to 10, not negative 10. So let's try negative 5 times negative 5. And those indeed add up to negative 10. So I'm going to use these um, values to factorize. So what I'm going to be left with is my first derivative is going to be equal to 15 times q minus 5 times q minus 5 and I'm setting this to be equal to 0. So this is my first derivative and of course this is the same as q minus 5 squared um, and this is going to be equal to 0 when q minus 5 is equal to 0. Therefore q equals 5 is where that first derivative is going to be equal to 0. So that's my critical q value. So step 2 is done. Now I'm going to find the associated um, profit value for that q value. So profit when q is equal to 5 is going to be equal to 5 times 5 cubed minus 75 times 5 squared plus 375 times 5 plus 500. I've just substituted 5 into this equation right here. This is going to give me 1,125. So I have a critical point at 5 comma 1,125. Step 3 is done. Now the next step is to determine if this is a maximum, minimum, or a saddle point. We don't want to confuse minimum and maximum profit and end up choosing minimum profit instead of maximum profit. So we're going to start the second derivative test to determine the shape of the function here to see if it's going to be a maximum, minimum, or a saddle point. So the second derivative is going to be the derivative of my first derivative. So I'm going to take the derivative of this function right up here and that's going to give me the derivative of 15 q squared is going to be 30 q and the derivative of negative 150 q is going to be negative 150 and the derivative of 375 is 0 so I'm done now I'm going to solve for this second derivative I've done this step four I'm going to solve for this second derivative at my critical point. So I'm going to take this 5, this q value at the critical point and substitute it into this equation. So I'm going to take my second derivative at q is equal to 5 is going to be 30 times 5 minus 150. This is going to give me 150 minus 150 which is equal to 0. Well, I don't have a happy or sad face for this 
When my second derivative is equal to zero, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a minimum, I don't know if it's a maximum, or if it's a saddle point. So my second derivative test is inconclusive, but that's okay because we have a step six. We don't often use it, but we've got a step six for this exact situation. So today I'm going to go to step six and I'm going to do the first derivative test. So when I do the first derivative test, what I'm doing, this is my Q value, I have a critical point here when Q is equal to five. I'm going to choose a value below Q is equal to five and above Q is equal to five. And I'm going to calculate the first derivative and just examine the slope. I'm going to look at the slope. So let's take Q is equal to one over here and Q is equal to 10, easy numbers to work with. So I'm going to take my first derivative. That's this function right here. So let's take that and copy it over. And now I'm going to calculate this value at these points that I have chosen. Now Q is equal to one first. So when Q is equal to one, the first derivative is going to be 15 times one squared minus 150 times one plus 375. That's going to give me 240. So I have a positive slope over here, positive slope. And then I'm going to repeat this for Q is equal to 10. So my first derivative at Q is equal to 10 is going to be 15 times 10 squared minus 150 times 10 plus 375. This is going to give me 375. This is also positive. So in this region, I'd also be dealing with a positive slope. So what this means if I just lower this and give myself more space to draw this out, is that my function is going to start off going positive. It's going to taper to have a slope of zero and then it's going to go up again. Essentially, this is going to be my point of inflection. It is going to be a saddle point because it is both a point of inflection and it is where the slope is equal to zero it's neither a maximum nor a minimum. Slope is equal to zero and it's a point of inflection. It's a saddle point, neither a maximum nor a minimum. So what this means is that my profit is just going up, up, up. As long as I sell more, I'm going to be more profitable, more and more profitable. So um, there's no maximum profit per se, except we do have one limitation, and that is our production capacity. So we won't be able to sell more than we can produce. So maximum profit in this case isn't going to be dictated by the shape of the curve. It's going to be dictated by our production capacity. I'm going to determine the maximum profit using 10 million units. So I'm going to take my original profit equation. Profit is going to be equal to 5q cubed minus 75q squared plus 375q plus 500. And I'm going to substitute 10 million in production. Now let's be careful because our q value, it has its own units. So it's not just 10 million. There's 100,000 in each unit of Q. This is going to be equal to 100. So Q is 100. And I'm going to substitute that into my equation. 5 times 100 cubed minus 75 times 100 squared plus 375 times 100 plus 500. And that is going to give me my maximum profit of 1,750. Now this also has a unit of thousands. So I'm going to multiply that by thousands, which is going to give me a profit of $1,750,000 when selling 10 million units. 
Now maximum profit is limited by production, not by demand or pricing. And there's my final answer for the maximization of profit.